Om Namo Narayanaya. Today we are reading Chapter 6, Parusha Sukta Confirmed. Lord Brahma said, The mouth of the Virat Parusha, the universe of form, the Lord, is the generating center of the voice, and the controlling deity is fire. His skin and six other layers are the generating centers of the Vedic hymns, and his tongue is the productive center of different foodstuffs and delicacies for offering to the demigods, the forefathers, and the general mass of people. His two nostrils are the generating centers of our breathing and of all other airs. His smelling powers generate the Ashvini Kumara demigods, and all kinds of medicinal herbs, and his breathing energies produce different kinds of fragrance. His eyes are the generating centers of all kinds of forms, and they glitter and illuminate. His eyeballs are like the sun and the heavenly planets. His ears hear from all sides and are receptacles for all the Vedas, and his sense of hearing is the generating center of the sky and all kinds of sound. His bodily surface is the breeding ground for the active principles of everything and for all kinds of auspicious opportunities. His skin, like moving air, is the generating center for all kinds of sense of touch and is the place for performing all kinds of sacrifice. The hairs on his body are the cause of all vegetation, particularly of those trees which are required as ingredients for sacrifice. The hairs on his head and face are reservoirs for the clouds, and his nails are the breeding ground of electricity, stones, and iron ores. The Lord's arms are the productive fields for the great demigods and other leaders of the living entities who protect the general mass. Thus, the forward steps of the Lord are the shelter for the upper, lower, and heavenly planets, as well as for all that we need. His lotus feet serve as protection from all kinds of fear. From the Lord's genitals originate water, semen, generatives, rains, and procreators. His genitals are the cause of all a pleasure that counteracts the distress of begetting. O Narada, the evacuating outlet of the universal form of the Lord is the abode of the controlling deity of death, Mitra, and the evacuating hole in the rectum of the Lord is the place of envy, misfortune, death, hell, etc. The back of the Lord is the place for all kinds of frustration and ignorance, as well as for immortality. From his veins flowed the great rivers and rivulets, and on his bones are stacked the great mountains. The impersonal feature of the Lord is the abode of great oceans, and his belly is the resting place for the materially annihilated living entities. His heart is the abode of the subtle material bodies of living beings, thus it is known by the intelligent class of men. Also the consciousness of that great personality is the abode of religious principles, mine, yours, and those of the four bachelors, Sanaka, Sanatana, Sanatkumana, and Sanandana. That consciousness is also the abode of truth and transcendental knowledge. Beginning from me, Brahma, down to you and Baba, Shiva, all the great sages who were born before you, the demigods, the demons, the nagas, the human beings, the birds, the beasts, as well as the reptiles, etc., etc., and all the phenomenal manifestations of the universes, namely the planets, stars, asteroids, luminaries, lightning, thunder, and the inhabitants of the different planetary systems, namely the Ganda, Harvas, Asaras, Yakshas, Rakshas, Bhutaganas, Uragas, Pasos, Pitas, Siddhas, Vidyadharas, Karanas, and all other different varieties of living entities, including the birds, beasts, trees, and everything that be, are all covered by the universal form of the Lord at all times, namely past, present, and future. Although he is transcendental to all of them, eternally existing in a form not exceeding nine inches. The sun illuminates both internally and externally by expanding its radiation. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by expanding his universal form, maintains everything in the creation, both internally and externally. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of immortality and fearlessness, and he is transcendental to death and the fruitive actions of the material world. O Narada, O Brahmana, it is therefore difficult to measure the glories of the Supreme Person. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is to be known as the supreme reservoir of all material opulences by the one-fourth of his energy in which all living entities exist. Deathlessness, fear, 
blissness, and freedom from the anxieties of old age and disease exist in the kingdom of God, which is beyond the three higher planetary systems and beyond the material coverings. The spiritual world, which consists of three-fourths of the Lord's energy, is situated beyond this material world and is especially meant for those who will never be reborn. Others who are attached to their family life and who do not strictly follow celibacy vows must live within the three material worlds. By his energies, the all-pervading personality of Godhead is thus comprehensively the master in the activities of controlling and in devotional service. He is the ultimate master of both nescience and factual knowledge of all situations. From that personality of Godhead, all the universal globes and the universal form with all material elements, qualities, and senses are generated. Yet, he is aloof from such material manifestations like the sun, which separate from its rays and heat. I'm just going to pause here, because this is a long chapter. This is a chapter, as I said in the last video, that I think needs a diagram. I think you need to draw this out and, and get it. It's just so much in, in such a prose form, it needs to be like textbook out. But a thought came to me. So... It's describing how we are part of the Lord, right? So we are all, we are all the Lord is us, and yet we are the Lord. Is that not what this is really saying? All of us, all everything, everything we have is this wall, the calendar, the rack behind me. This is all the Lord, right? Even the light here is part of the Lord. My voice is part of the Lord. It's all one. Is that not really what this is described? Because we're all part of that universal form. Right? So, so these religions that say, oh, you are the Lord, and see the Lord in everything, they're actually correct. Though, I ask, do they, see, do they say, see the Lord in this, you know, plastic thing? Do they say that? Or see the Lord in this frying pan? No, normally, they don't necessarily do that. Usually, I think these religions talk about see the Lord and the birds and the bees and the nice things, not in my calendar on the wall with the, you can't see it, but it's a kitty cat. So I don't think they go far enough, but I think this book is verifying that that is the correct point of view. Yet, we're not all, all bumbled to get bumbled, but mixed together as a soup. So we're not all like... We're, we're, we're part of the Lord, but yet we're not part of the Lord. So we're part of the Lord's body, but yet the Lord is still separate from us. Is that not also what this is saying? So, you know, the birds and the bees coexist in the body of the Lord with us, but we are not the bees. We are not the birds, right? So we're separate from the Lord. This wall is not me. This, this wall is the Lord. I am the Lord, but we are, I'm not the wall. Right? So we got that idea here. Many religions talk about that. You're, you're, you're separate from the Lord. I was talking to a, a Shaivite uh, Swami the other day, and he goes, Oh yes, in our religion, we are part of God, but you know, in ISKCON, they're separate from God. But yet, here is a ISKCON text. What's well, not an ISKCON text, but a translation by an ISKCON teacher. The ISKCON teacher. And yet, it doesn't really say that we're separate. It says that we're kind of all there. On the other hand, we're always with the Lord. Always with the Lord. We cannot exist without the Lord, and we will not exist without the Lord. The Lord creates us, keeps us going. And thus, when people said, like, um, here, I make this video in, in 2022, and everybody, everybody knows what happened over the last few years in the world. And I remember when the bug first started, People were like, oh, there's no God now. God is gone and laughing at us. He's punishing us. God is sitting back and waiting us for us to, literally saw this, vote out Republicans. That's what God was saying. Because I guess America is the only thing God cares about. Okay? Um, or God is waiting for us to end global warming and this is... And I saw all these things and I just responded back with like, I don't believe that in the least. I was really getting into Iskon at the time. It was really heavy. This was, this is was when I was really into this. And people are like, God is dead and God is... I'm like, no. 
it, that's impossible. If God is who I think he is, and my God is this God, even though I hadn't read the book, my, my belief system was coming off of this, and if I believe this is true, and I believe my religion is true, God is not dead, not, God is not punishing us, God is not sitting back, because it's impossible. Because if God sits back and goes, all right, I'm done with you people, you fix your climate change, that means we're now completely separated from God. And according to what we just read, we're not separated from God. We are a part of God. So God didn't tick us off like a, 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 a bug. So God couldn't have been two years ago sitting back and going, I'm done with you people. He couldn't have been, if you believe the book. And when I saw people say this, I almost thought to myself, I don't think they believe their own religion. I think when the chips are down, they don't believe. They really don't believe. I had a friend of mine, she's a, she's a minister, a Christian minister, and uh, I've known her for half my life, and you know, occasionally we share our work with each other, and she was saying to me, suddenly people went crazy. Um, and she actually moved her congregation to another, not her congregation, her church, her whole thing, to another city. It was just easier, because everything fell apart. And she, we were talking about this, and she's like, yeah, I'm fine. My belief continues, and her belief continues, and we're all like, yeah, God still exists, not a big deal. And, and we even did a podcast over it, and finding God and in, in troubled times. And basically, we both felt that a lot of people just revealed to the world, when the chips are down, they don't really have faith. They don't really believe. Because if you truly believe... This is true no matter what's happening in the world. That's just my take on it. I just hit like five different topics <laughs> in this. And I, I apologize. I, my mind went here and here and here. But I hopefully that made sense. And you saw where I was going. And maybe there's something there. Some thought of interest to you. And uh, anyways, feel free to comment back. And uh, I said bug you know what I was talking about, a virus, because YouTube likes to take things down or whatever, and some words are like trigger words, and you don't know. So anyways, I just always say bug now. All right. Would love to hear your thoughts back. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Harry, Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama, Harry Harry.